I'm Cynthia Rowland, and this is episode 79 of EO Radio Show. In this episode, I highlight some tax schemes designed to exploit both taxpayers and the Treasury. The Internal Revenue Service just wrapped up its annual April filing season campaign, known as the Dirty Dozen Campaign, which is a public education outreach effort. This campaign includes warnings to taxpayers about a number of these fraudulent schemes, several of which purport to benefit charitable purposes. Fraudulent schemes threatening taxpayers can take many different forms, including agreements related to bogus art donations and improper application of the rules allowing charitable planning using charitable remainder trusts, as well as outright fraudulent charitable solicitations for scammers posing as charities. In today's episode, I bring you the IRS warnings on these topics and some advice on how to spot the scams. Welcome to the EO Radio Show, your nonprofit legal resource. Brought to you by the Exempt Organizations Group at Ferella Braun & Martel. My name is Cynthia Rowland, and I'm a partner at Ferella. I'm a business and tax lawyer with more than 30 years of experience advising clients on nonprofit and charity law. Through this podcast, our lawyers and guests will discuss a range of legal and business issues impacting the nonprofit world because we understand you work hard every day to make your community a better place to live and do business. Many of our programs focus on the basics, and at times we'll do a deep dive into narrow and complicated legal issues. Again, welcome to the EO Radio Show. We're glad you're here. Started in the year 2002, the IRS's annual Dirty Dozen campaign traditionally lists 12 scams and schemes that put taxpayers, businesses, and the tax professional community at risk of losing money, personal information, data, and more. While the Dirty Dozen campaign is not a legal document or a formal listing of agency enforcement priorities, this IRS education effort is designed to raise awareness and protect taxpayers and tax professionals from these common tax scams and schemes, including fake charities. The Internal Revenue Service works with state agencies and the nation's tax industry to cooperatively implement a variety of internal security measures to protect taxpayers. This collaborative effort has focused on educating taxpayers about scams and fraudulent schemes throughout the year. Through initiatives like the Dirty Dozen, the IRS strives to protect taxpayers, businesses, and the tax system from cyber criminals and deceptive activities that seek to extract information and money. So of the 12 days this year in the 2024 campaign, on the sixth day and the 10th day, we had some interesting points about Dirty Dozen's tax scams that are particularly relevant to the charitable and exempt organizations community. In the sixth part of the Dirty Dozen tax scams this year, the Internal Revenue Service warned taxpayers about groups masquerading as charitable organizations to attract donations from unsuspecting contributors. This often comes up in connection with natural disasters and other tragic events. It's common for compassionate individuals to donate money to help the victims. Unfortunately, scammers often use fake charities as a cover to not only obtain money, but also to gather sensitive personal and financial information that can be exploited for tax-related identity fraud. When taxpayers decide to contribute funds or goods to an organization, they may qualify for a deduction on their tax return, but only if they itemize their deductions. It is important to remember that charitable donations are valid only when directed toward an IRS-recognized tax-exempt organization that qualifies under Internal Revenue Code Section 501c3. Individuals intending to donate can use the tax-exempt organization's search tool on the irs.gov website to ensure that the intended donee is a legitimate charity. I've put a link to that site in the show notes. Also, many states have active attorney general offices that root out these scams, and they maintain databases of charities that comply with their state laws. California is one of those, and there are quite a few others. In California, it's known as the Registry of Charities and Fundraisers, which publishes a current list of charities that are in good standing in the state of California. Many of our quick tip episodes on EO Radio Show cover state registration and reporting obligations in many of the states. And in those episodes, we list the charity registration resources in our show notes, and we discuss them in those episodes. So if you're interested to see if your state is covered and whether it has a registry of qualified charities, check out that link on our playlist on the YouTube channel, which is also in the show notes. Back to some best practices to avoid being scammed. Keep in mind that scammers use email communications, text messages, manipulative caller ID numbers, and other resources to deceive people into donating funds to fake charities. These fraudulent groups often target individuals such as seniors and those with limited English proficiency. Here are some helpful tips from the IRS to avoid getting scammed. 
Don't give in to pressure. Scammers often create situations to get people to make immediate payments. Genuine charities are always grateful for donations. Donors should take their time and research before making a charitable contribution. Exercise caution when making donation payments. Avoid any charity that requests gift card numbers or wire transfers. It's better to pay by your own credit card or your own personal check after ensuring the charity's authenticity. As noted above, verify the legitimacy of the charity. Scammers often use similar sounding names for charities to confuse people. Before donating, potential donors need to ask the fundraiser for the charity's legal name, website, and mailing address so that they can independently verify its authenticity. And finally, another best practice is to avoid sharing too much information. Scammers are always on the lookout for both money and personal data. Never disclose social security numbers, credit card numbers, or personal identification numbers. Only provide bank or credit card details after confirming that the charity that you're sending the money to is actually the one you intend to fund and that it is legitimate. So moving on, on the 10th day of the Dirty Dozen campaign, the IRS again returned to charitable scams and warned wealthy individuals about three common tax traps designed just for them by dishonest promoters and shady tax practitioners, two of which highlighted fraud schemes aimed at high-income taxpayers. These taxpayers can be tempting targets for a variety of schemes and aggressive tax strategies designed to reduce taxes. They can take many different forms, ranging from inflated art donation deductions to aggressive charitable remainder annuity trusts and also detailed shelters that maneuver to delay paying gains on the sale of property. High-income taxpayers are vulnerable to being pulled into these aggressive schemes and scams and should be extra careful on tax strategies that seem too good to be true. Beware of ads for seemingly ideal tax structures that distort tax laws and leave victims with civil and criminal tax penalties on top of the lost money. There's a growing risk for taxpayers to be pulled into these aggressive schemes, and the IRS continues to accelerate and expand its compliance work looking at high-income taxpayers. The IRS reminds taxpayers that they really should rely on their own independent tax or legal professional, especially when faced with a too-good-to-be-true potential tax strategy. So one of those scams that was highlighted on the 10th day of the Dirty Dozen campaign is improper art donation deductions. Here's how that scam works. And keep in mind that there are ways for taxpayers to properly claim donations of art. But these unscrupulous promoters use direct solicitations to promise values of artworks that are just too good to be true. These promoters encourage taxpayers to buy various types of art, often at discounted prices. This price may also include additional services from the promoter, such as storage, shipping, and arranging the appraisal and donation of the art. The promoter promises the art is worth significantly more than the purchase price and all those costs associated with storage, shipping, and appraisal services. These schemes are designed to encourage purchasers to donate the art after waiting at least one year and to claim a charitable tax deduction for the inflated fair market value, which is substantially more than what they had paid for the artwork. The promoters of these schemes may suggest taxpayers donate art annually and allow them to buy a quantity of art each year that guarantees a specific deductible amount. Promoters may even arrange for certain charities to take the donations. Keep in mind that the Internal Revenue Service has its own team of professionally trained appraisers in art appraisal services who can provide assistance and advice to the IRS and taxpayers on valuation questions in connection with personal property and works of art. For more information on charitable contribution substantiation requirements and art appraisal techniques, listeners might want to revisit our EO Radio Show Episode 17, which takes a deep dive into these issues for donations of art that are in fact proper. So moving on, the final scheme that I wanted to mention today is the improper use of charitable remainder annuity trusts. A charitable remainder trust is an irrevocable trust that lets a person donate assets to the charity and draw annual income for life for a specific time period. So in other words, there are two beneficiaries to a charitable remainder trust, the individual donor who takes the payment during the term of the trust and a remainder charitable beneficiary that gets the remainder after the term. The IRS examines charitable remainder trusts carefully to ensure that they correctly report trust income and distributions to the beneficiaries, file the required tax documents each year, and follow applicable laws and rules for split interest trusts. Unfortunately, these trusts are sometimes misused to try to eliminate taxable capital gain to the taxpayer and donor to the trust. Here's how the abusive scheme works. Appreciated property is transferred to the charitable remainder annuity trust trustee. The taxpayer donor wrongly claims the transfer of the appreciated assets to the charitable remainder trust 
and assigns those assets a step up in basis to fair market value as if they had been sold. The charitable remainder trust then sells the property but does not report recognized taxable gain due to its claim that the basis is stepped up on the transfer. This is a wrong interpretation of the law. The promoters that design these schemes then arrange for the charitable remainder trust to use the proceeds from the sale to purchase a single premium immediate annuity instrument. The beneficiary, that is usually the donor and the taxpayer, then reports as income only a small portion of the annuity received from the SPIA, the Single Premium Immediate Annuity Contract. Through a misapplication of the law relating to charitable remainder trusts, the beneficiary taxpayer treats the remaining payment as an excluded portion representing a return of investment for which they claim that no tax is due. Taxpayers who seek to achieve this inaccurate result do so by misapplying the rules. For more information about sophisticated charitable planning techniques that do comply with the rules for split interest trusts, you may want to go back to episode 71 of EO Radio Show, where we talk about the actual rules for split interest trusts and some traps for the unwary. So I'll wrap up today's episode talking a little bit about what taxpayers can do when they spot these fraudulent schemes. As part of the Dirty Dozen awareness effort regarding tax schemes and unscrupulous tax return preparers, the IRS encourages individuals to report those who promote these abusive tax practices and tax preparers who intentionally file incorrect returns. To report an abusive tax scheme or tax return preparer, listeners can use the IRS Form 14242. That's IRS Form 14242, which is titled Report of Suspected Abusive Tax Promotions or Prepares. And this can be done online or by mail or fax. The relevant links and mailing addresses for these reporting mechanisms are in the show notes today. So that's all for this episode. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the IRS list of the rest of the Dirty Dozen and a link to our previous episodes on charitable planning techniques and appraisal best practices for contributions of artworks. Also, as mentioned, Pharrella Brana Martel has a YouTube channel, and there are several nonprofit playlists, including the Quick Tips episodes for state filing requirements and reporting that are relevant to charitable organizations. So look for that in the show notes as well. I'm Cynthia Rowland, and you've been listening to EO Radio Show, your nonprofit legal resource, brought to you by the Exempt Organizations Group at Pharrella Braun and Martel. If you have suggestions for topics you would like for us to discuss, please email us at eoradioshow at fbm.com. That's eoradioshow at fbm.com. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, make a difference. Make a difference.